Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. Today, we talk about water textures. Some do's and don'ts and some tips. Also, three ways on how to enhance the finish of the water texture. So, comments both here and at like Facebook kind of triggered me in a good way to enhance the basing of both this Archeon and the Cthulhu. The Archeon has like it's the blood, the sea of blood is a bit too red according to people and the Cthulhu basing is too pale. So we need to enhance the Cthulhu basing and add more color to it. And the Archeon base, we need to darken the blood so that it looks more like blood. The still water though will not be in this video, we'll do another video for the still water. The foam texture, we won't show it here because it's basically just dry brushing over the water texture to produce like foam effects and we've done it in other videos. So are water textures worth buying? I have here a bottle of like a 10 year old water texture. It could be 11 or 12 years old, I forgot. So basically, I have three generations of the transparent water texture. We now have a new formula version, which is, I think, dries more clear, but I'm not really sure. So let's see if the 10 year old bottle still works. This is the first time I opened this bottle for like years and I think the texture is a bit too thick in comparison to the newer bottles but it's still working. So I guess it's worth buying because you'll have a ton of water texture for years to come. There are three water textures with colors, the Mediterranean blue and then we also have the Pacific blue and the third one is the Atlantic Blue. All of these colored bluish texture paints are applied the same way and they dry at the same rate but they just have different like tones of blue. All of the texture paints, the water texture paints have the same like texture. They are like a more fluid version of toothpastes. But if you let this paint sit for like around 15 to 30 minutes, it's actually easier to sculpt the waves. Because as the water texture dries a bit or like the moisture evaporates a little bit, you kind of like you could sculpt it more and it's less tacky and has more volume or body to it. The blue texture paints can be applied a bit more thick at around like up to 2 to 3 millimeter or even thicker than when applying the transparent water texture paint. The colorless transparent like water texture should be applied very thinly because if you apply it in thick coats, some of the thicker layers might not dry completely clear. So we'll use this DND by WizKids like this flying boat to enhance the base, the transparent base. This also shows you that you don't need primer or even varnish to like apply texture paints. Any of the texture paints you could apply directly on the material like if it's plastic, metal, or wood. You don't need primer. If you apply the texture paints, the water texture paints on like glass or like smooth plastic or even metal you could peel it off but we, you need a bit of effort to peel it off so it's really strong the adhesion is strong and it will like cure in 24 hours into a rubber plastic finish again just to remind you the blue texture paints can be applied a bit more thicker than the transparent texture paint Now, I'll share with you three ways to enhance the finish of a cured texture paint. Gloss varnish will work if you apply it in three to five thin coats. 
First are the glossy washes, especially if you're like doing a swampy water texture. This oil stain has a brownish tint to it and it dries into a like super shiny finish. The petrol spills has like a bluish gray finish to it and can work to add like depth to your water texture. Both will cure to a very glossy finish. For Citadel painters, Agrax gloss is similar to oil stains and non-oil gloss is similar to petrol spills. Second is to mix the colorless water texture with transparent paints. Both the inks and the actual transparent colors will mix well with the texture paint. Flow colors will also mix really well with texture paints albeit it's like really, really vibrant. Or you could simply apply a very thin layer of the colorless texture paint to enhance the finish. Lastly, you could use gloss medium. Mediums are basically pigmentless paints because paints are technically binder plus pigments and the mediums are practically the binder. Oh, a quick note, don't use varnish to mix with paints. Also, don't use pigments plus varnish because the varnish, if you apply it too thickly, will be foggy or cloudy when it cures. Now to enhance the finish of the Cthulhu basing, we mix fluorescent blue and gloss medium and then applied it all over the basing. This will dry really fast, way faster than using texture paint. The medium being white is still white while it dries but it will leave the transparent color alone later. Now for the blood basing so that it will look darker or be darker and look more like blood, we mix transparent red with gloss medium. The transparent red without the gloss medium is like a dark red color. It's a crimson-ish color and it's very dark. It's not really bright red unlike the ink. But here you can see it's pink but it will dry dark and nice later. Now going back to the water textures that we applied earlier, as you can see, they're starting to be really clear now in 1 to 2 hours. These texture paints will cure in 24 hours. So that's it. The blood, the sea of blood is now darker. It's actually a little bit darker in person. The camera is like getting confused with the red. But it's darker and looks a bit more blood. And the foam is now covered with transparent red. And also I just use a hair dryer to like dry this up in like a few minutes. And it's now very glossy. On the other hand, the Cthulhu base is now brighter. It has a more bluish color and we're done. That's it. We're done. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our Discord community. Saludos!